Hi, my name is Scott Heron, and on behalf of my colleague, John Day, I'd like to thank you for this opportunity to participate in the symposium. Climate change is impacting uh, World Heritage sites in various ways and at various levels of severity. And we're all familiar with this as a concept. And uh, John and I together have developed the Climate Vulnerability Index that we're speaking to today, uh, which is a tool to rapidly assess climate vulnerability. One of the key attributes of this is that it is applicable for all types of World Heritage properties, and it can be consistently applied across these. Importantly, it's a systematic process, but it's not overly complex. And it is proactive. We're not waiting for impacts to occur before acting or looking at opportunities to act. It puts climate impacts into context. So we recognise that there are various other pressures and threats that are impacting heritage. And so here we have our values-based, science-driven and community-focused CVI process. And by, by values-based, we uh, mean that it is based on the property values, it is underpinned by climate and societal data, and it uses a participatory process to make sure that we link in with the community. The CVI has been applied in various World Heritage properties, and on this chart you can see a range of sizes from left to right, smaller to larger, and also uh, the cultural properties listed in orange and natural properties in green. And the two that are greyed out are properties that we're currently undertaking analyses on. For the Wadden Sea application, uh, we began with a set of key values that were already defined uh, by the CWSS and other organisations, partner groups. One of the key first steps that we took to help our participants understand these values and how they link in with the World Heritage Statement of Outstanding Universal Value was to evaluate the current condition of each of those key values and also the recent trend since the time of inscription of the Wadden Sea property. Now this is something that we undertake in our CBI workshops uh, in all properties. And the results here, as you'll see coming on the screen, indicate that uh, for the majority of key values, uh, the recent trend has been stable uh, with respect to the condition and that also for the majority, uh, the assessment was that currently they are good with some concerns. There were a couple of notable significant concerns that were raised within uh, key values or elements of key values. The key climate stresses that were identified for the Wadden Sea property, and this was undertaken in uh, our workshop of February 2020, conducted in Hamburg, uh, were, to, were identified as being long-term temperature trends. And you see here global projections of uh, surface air temperature and sea surface temperature, which are representative of, though not specific to, the conditions in the Wadden Sea. Also extreme temperature events. So this is short-term temperature occurrences. And here we see IPCC projections, uh, data and projections for uh, heat waves in the marine environment. And the third of the key climate stresses identified was sea level rise. And once again, we see uh, the data record and projections uh, as reflected in the IPCC analyses. So the assessment of the OUV vulnerability for the Wadden Sea property uh, was undertaken through various uh, a process and I recommend to you, if you would like to have more information, uh, to look at some of the documentation uh, in the report and the references therein from the OUV vulnerability assessment. The outcome was on a traffic light scale, red, yellow and green. The workshop decided to look at, uh, to use the representative concentration pathway 
uh, 8.5, uh, RCP 8.5, which is the uh, worst case of the IPCC uh, climate futures and the scenarios that are presented. Two timeframes were examined. The first of these was around 2050. And with respect to our three key climate stresses, the vulnerability of the outstanding universal value, the world heritage values, was assessed as the highest category, highest vulnerability with respect to both temperature uh, stresses, short term and long term. Sea level rise, the assessment was a low level of vulnerability. The two red lights uh, contribute, uh, identified that the final assessment there for the overall OUV vulnerability is also a red line. In the workshop, we uh, quickly flipped to be able to also assess uh, a circa 2100 timeframe. And the difference there in the vulnerability assessments was that sea level rise moved from a low vulnerability green light to a high vulnerability red light. Again, the overall OUV vulnerability was a red light. Now these uh, summary pieces of information uh, cover over a large number of different assessments that are described inside the phase one workshop report. To give some context uh, to our international session here today, uh, these climate stresses identified for the natural heritage Wadden Sea uh, were overlapping but not identical to those identified for another uh, application of CVI in a natural heritage property, Shark Bay. We've also had analyses of, uh, as noted previously, uh, cultural heritage locations, and these two uh, were in Scotland. And you can see, again, there are uh, some shared uh, climate stresses identified in each of these different workshops, but also some differences. Our most recent applications have been in two cultural heritage properties in Africa. And once again, we've seen uh, some overlap, uh, but some unique uh, climate stresses being identified uh, as being most relevant to these properties. The second phase of the CDI process uh, builds upon the outstanding universal value assessment and it looks at the community vulnerability. And for this, we use uh, some uh, economic, social and cultural indicators. The economic sectors for the Wadden Sea World Heritage property were predefined uh, prior to the workshop and are existing, uh, were existing already uh, in the use by Wadden Sea practitioners. And so we wanted to be consistent with those and under the guidance of our partners in CWSS. When we look at assessing the community vulnerability, you can see, as I mentioned on the right hand side, uh, economic, social and cultural components that we include in the assessment and climate change can impact and influence each of these. Now, we look at each of these through the lens of the World Heritage Values. So the assessment of community vulnerability in the CVI process is the impacts on the community resulting from a loss of world heritage values due to climate change. We want to acknowledge that there can also be direct effects of climate change upon aspects of the communities. However, uh, to emphasize in the CVI analysis, we use that lens of looking through the world heritage values and attributes. There were various complexities regarding the community vulnerability assessment uh, that we identified. Um, we were asked to provide a single analysis for the entire Wadden Sea area, um, though the report uh, from the first phase had recommended considering uh, various other uh, jurisdictional or other spatial geographical areas, given the uh, vast geography of the property. We also noted, and it was noted to us by participants, there was a great diversity of the communities and the activities undertaken. As a outcoming out of the workshop, uh, participants 
indicated an apparent decoupling of the community from the world heritage values, that there was a seeming independence of community and potential impacts from the world heritage values. The uh, workshop process uh, identified a need for better and more consistent information sources for the economic, social and cultural information across the three countries and five jurisdictions that make up the Wadden Sea property. As noted on the previous side, slide, uh, there was some uh, noted confusion amongst participants uh, of not being able to distinguish the ideas around direct impacts of climate change upon the community uh, in contrast to the indirect or via world heritage, uh, the world heritage values, impacts of climate change on the community. And finally, in, upon reflection, there was insufficient time allocated for the workshop given the complexities that we identified. And there was also a lack of overlap of participants between the two workshops which meant that there was less of a lesser familiarity with the process and a need to go over some elements coming out from the first workshop. However, uh, the systematic approach provided by the CVI uh, was completed and it did reveal uh, results as summarized on the slide before you. It's a very busy slide. Uh, on the left-hand side uh, for the 2050 timeframe, we already noted the high OUV vulnerability with respect to the two temperature stresses and a low vulnerability to sea level rise. On the right hand side, we see the results coming out from the analysis from the community vulnerability assessment. It's important to point out and note here that on the left hand side, there was a high degree of consistency of the outcomes from the different members of the workshop, the breakout groups and the process that we use as compared with the measure of consistency when assessing the community vulnerability components. And so that's an important observation uh, that there is a, a high degree of confidence, we could say, in the assessment of high OUV vulnerability uh, compared with the assessment reach of a moderate community vulnerability. And again, you'll see the note at the bottom of the screen there that the community vulnerability assessment relates to the projected loss of values due to climate change. It doesn't, affect, it doesn't include effects directly from climate change on the community that do not involve World Heritage values. So the CBI Wadden Sea analysis has provided uh, a current condition and recent trend assessment for the key values. Assessments of the OUV vulnerability uh, for the 2050 and 2100 timeframes and an initial analysis of community vulnerability. Um, importantly, the CVI has used a systematic approach that's consistent with the analyses of other World Heritage problems. Future activities uh, can, be, can benefit from this baseline that is provided uh, and so systematic assessments in the future can be compared with this. Uh, through the process, uh, there were knowledge gaps and research needs that were identified. And going back to that recommendation from the first report, analysis of community vulnerability at finer geographic scales uh, may be beneficial, and then a synthesis coming back up to the one modern sea level. And for those analyses, to have a, a better understanding of world heritage values, climate change, and community impacts, and how they are in uh, linked with one another and informed by data finally uh, if you have any questions please don't hesitate to reach out uh, you see here displayed our update newsletters one of which was released just this week the most recent one and thank you very much for this opportunity again bye now